Welcome back. Our little dose of spring snow has melted, and if you have a green thumb, you've probably been hard at work getting ready for the gardening season. But how do you make sure that that hard work doesn't go to waste and your plants actually thrive this summer? Garden Guy Dale K joins us with some advice and looking ahead to the weekend. It's going to be tempting to like start planting and stuff. I know we shouldn't yet, but we can kind of get things in order. I don't, you know, after this little bit of rain, yeah, and then the warmer temperatures coming up over the weekend. It's going to start to look a lot like spring. Everything's going to green up. Things are going to start popping. And don't be surprised if next week we're doing some more planting, talking about lawns, because I think, you know, the second two weeks of April look a lot different oftentimes than the first two weeks of April. So perfect timing to get your green thumb kind of in shape. So here are some just some basic tips and some of them might be you know really familiar but just a good reminder on how you can have your your yard and all your plants flourish over the growing season and we'll start with watering uh, essentially and it's kind of some some basic common sense but oftentimes with watering just a good balance is really important and getting to know your plants what i like to recommend just basically is slow deep waterings that is usually best rather than just splashing water around oftentimes with a little mm -hmm. uh, irrigation kit like that you kind of end up with that slow deep waterings that makes the soil nice and moist without um, causing too much wet or a too uh, too soggy where root rot becomes a problem and also a handy tool that I think is kind of a little bit underrated, just your common old watering can. You can get mm -hmm. some water, you know, kind of quick. It's easy to fill up from a rain barrel if you've got one of those connected, but it kind of gets water quick uh, where you need it. So keep one of those on hand as well. Really what goes into tandem with uh, correct watering, and it, again, it's finding that balance of knowing your plants. It's not always the easiest thing. Every plant's a little bit different, um, different times of the day, and different seasons too will, will determine watering. Oftentimes we're watering a little bit more in the summer, of course, than we are in the spring and in the fall. So get to know your garden a little bit. That really helps. Most importantly then, it comes to soil. First, first one being composting. And Kelly in front of you is like a little home composting kit that you can put all your veggie scraps into mm -hmm. and then into your compost bin. But essentially, once you have compost, to, to mix mm -hmm. that in and incorporate it, use it liberally, that is really good. I have a, my uh, compost from home right there. It's kind of that darker one. That's, uh, that's really a great amendment. And really kind of any kind of, anything solid and organic when you're amending soil or adding new, uh, amending the soil, I guess, mm -hmm. whether it's compost or manure or compost is really beneficial. The better the soil, the better your plants will grow, the greener your thumb will be. We're looking at some potting soil there. You do get what you pay for. Um, I always go to a local garden shop. I get their potting soil uh, rather than national brands. It ends up being a lot better, mm. I think, in the long run, drains better. And that's really that's really key as far as uh, container gardening is drainage of potting soil. So soil is really important. And then uh, the final thing on top of soil, anytime you can add some garden mulch to your to your beds, that helps retain moisture too. And uh, actually a lot so of beneficial you do things. every year, um, would you say? That was going to be my next question. How yeah. often yeah. do you have to replace the mulch? So some, some people will do it every year, and that's kind of like fresh seat sheets, right? Mm -hmm. Or, you know, like yeah. a little bit pop a color every two years because what happens is it does it does compost down so every couple of years you can go out and reapply a couple of inches is is really good so uh, that kind of covers the soil and then next of course is fertility and of course you don't underestimate the power of fertilizer particularly in the growing season for all our plants so some some things to look for this first one uh, the first type of fertilizer I guess is the one that mixes with water turns the water blue you know like that yes. miracle grow kind of mm -hmm, stuff mm -hmm. um, that's a liquid fertilizer. That's good for all your flowers. It kind of pushes things into bloom. I like to splash a little bit on the foliage as well. I always have some of that on hand. Uh, slow release fertilizer, that's the one, that's the, the fertilizer that's actually coated. It has a coating on it and it will release with time and, and soil temperature and that will last, that will feed for about four months. That's really good for all your perennials. Um, I pop a little bit in my container gardens, that way I don't have to fuss, too, fuss around too much with, with container gardening. But a slow release fertilizer is really good. And then for veggie gardens, I like anything that's kind of poultry manure or feather meal. You'll find it, you'll find it, uh, you know, many different types of brands. But if you look on the back and if it's derived from feather meal or some sort of poultry byproduct, I don't know, I don't know what it is, because there's, you know, there's cow manure, there's horse manure, there's all this stuff, right? But this stuff really works, and either one actually, works really, really well for fertilizing, particularly your veggies. Oh, 
Okay. You, okay. You, it's almost oh. it's almost like remarkable how right? okay. feather mill or poultry or poultry fertilizer is good. If you're doing any transplanting, uh, adding some mycorrhizae to your plantings, it's this activates the beneficial microbes that are in your soil. Um, it's kind of like a good back, back scratch. You know how you get mm -hmm. all kind of, you feel really good after that? Mm -hmm. That's kind of what uh, happens to your roots. It kind of um, stimulates growth essentially. So that's really good. Um, if you're following all those great watering practices, got good soil, got good drainage, more than likely that you're not going to have pest problems. But if you do, look for something that's OMRI listed. Um, that will be a lot better for your garden, especially your veggies and all your, all your shrubs and your fruit trees. And then finally, uh, pruning. Uh, techniques are really important for, for mm -hmm. good growth. You get to you get to know your plants. There's all sorts of different types of pruning techniques and when to prune. It's an in-depth subject. Maybe we'll go into it a little bit further along as we go on the spring. But just simply, like on a fruit tree, there's inward-facing buds and outward-facing buds. You always want to prune to an outward-facing bud. That way the tree doesn't grow into itself. So that's just one example of correct pruning and then, of course, at the right time as well. Above or below? Just above. So if I wanted to prune this back about a third, I'd come back to this little bud here. It's, this is an inward facing, that's an outward facing. So you want your trees to, to branch out. So that's just one little example of proper pruning. And then finally, uh, when you're purchasing plants, make sure you read the label. There's always a lot of good information on the, on the back. Do your research. Watch the Garden Guy here on Fox 9, <laughs> Tuesdays and Thursdays. Shameless plug, you can catch me on the gram as well. <laughs> Should you be pruning fruit trees now, or is it too early? You, you can before they leaf out, before okay. they before they go into before they bud out is okay. is key. So, but you, th there's a whole lot, there's a whole group. But getting to know your getting to know your site mm -hmm. and your plants, and then reading labels, doing your research online, wherever you get that good information from, goes a long way to helping your green thumb. Yeah, the pruning seems to be uh, always confusing. Like you know, when, what time of the year, right? What what plant? were shrubs really 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 quick okay if it's spring blooming you prune them after after flowering for Scythia lilacs you prune them right after flowering anything that's kind of summer blooming you can prune early right now spirea wagilia all those sort of things so sometimes the bloom times affect mm. pruning as well okay good okay. stuff Dale just Great. getting started we appreciate it